Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this are this is the video where I share my the 20 books that I've chosen for the booktube spin number three. This uh, came on suddenly for me. I wasn't expecting it for some reason. I should have been, um, I guess, but um, it came as a bit of a surprise, but I quickly gathered 20 books so that I could get this video up in time because um, the results will be announced here really quickly in just a couple of days. So for this round of the booktube spin, um, I chose 20 books from my cart that were kind of felt summery in some way uh, because I'm going to be reading them in July, August and Sept or September and so I wanted uh, kind of a summery read. So that's how I chose them. Um, if you are unfamiliar with the booktube spin um, as a concept, I will put um, Rick's video down below and you can check that out and figure out. Uh, basically, he will just uh, post a video um, where he spins a wheel and it chooses a number between 1 and 20. Uh, whoever's participating has to have a list of 20 numbered books, 20 books and whatever number comes up, that's the book you read. And so it's just a really fun way of randomly choosing a book to read. So my 20 books this time around are book number one, Closed Circle by Robert Goddard. This is a historical um, mystery set in 1931 on the new and luxurious transatlantic liner Empress of Britain. And, and she is heading eastward there are um, among the first class passengers two English confident tricksters making a confidence tricksters making a discreet exit from a little awkwardness they have left behind them in the United States. And uh, this just looks like a fun, a fun, uh, you know, onboard ship kind of an adventure. And I did a, a double check. I quickly read and I believe it's set in July. So uh, that sounds like a good summer read to me. Some of these books you will uh, recognize from my recent um, summer inspiration video. Uh, this is the summer of the Barshinskevs, Barshinskis, sorry, by Diane Pearson. This is um, historical fiction. In the blazing heat of that Edwardian summer, the seeds were sown for the fusion of two families. And this is the story that goes between um, the chaste austerity of rural England to the dark uncertainty of revolutionary Russia. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually really interested uh, to pick this one up. It sounds intriguing. It's a bit of a longer one, but that's okay. Book number three is The Moon Spinners by Mary Stewart. This is a recent uh, purchase for me, um, but I have not read it yet. And although I'm not entirely sure if this takes place in the summer or not, it takes place on the island of Crete. And uh, I'm gonna say that that feels summary to me. Is the main character is Nicola Ferris, and she is on a walking holiday um, in Crete. And she stumbles across a critically injured Englishman geared, guarded by a fierce Greek. She can't abandon them and so sets off on a perilous search for their lost companion, all the while being pursued by someone who wants to make sure none of them leave the island. That sounds like a good summer read, right? Number four, A Meditation on Murder by Robert Thorogood. Again, I'm not entirely sure if this takes place in the summer or not, but it takes place in the Caribbean um, and therefore it is hot and um, I will call it a summary read. This is the first in his Death in Paradise books. It's a locked room mystery, one murder victim, five suspects, and a classic locked room mystery. I love it. Uh, where are we up to? Number five? One, two, three, four. Yes, number five, Death on the Riviera by John Bude. Look at that cover. If that doesn't scream summer to you, then I don't know what does. This is a mystery that was uh, published in 1952, and Detective Inspector Meredith um, is sent out of the London murk to the warmth and glitter of the Mediterranean. Um, there is a counterfeit currency racket that he needs to investigate. He is paired up with an amiable policeman from Nice. And uh, yeah, 
That sounds great. Number six, The Messenger of Athens by Anne Zeraudi. Again, I'm not entirely sure if this is set in summer, but it's on a Greek island, and so therefore it feels summery. It's going to be warm. The Greek island of Thymenos uh, seems untouched by the modern world. So when the battered body of a young woman is discovered at the foot of a cliff, the local police, governed more by archaic rules of honor than by the law, are quick to close the case, dismissing her death as an accident. Then a messenger arrives uninvited from Athens, announcing his intentions to investigate further. Hmm, intriguing. Seven is The Bernini Bust by Ian Pears. This is part of his Art Theft Squad series. And although normally set in Rome, this one is actually set in Miami because Jonathan has just sold an overpriced titian to the Moresby Museum in Los Angeles, a well-endowed institution better known for tackiness than for taste. But while Jonathan awaits his payment in the Californian sunshine, the museum's billionaire owner is murdered, a dubious art dealer disappears, and a Bernini bust, apparently smuggled out of Italy, goes missing. And he gets his friends at the Italian National Art Theft Squad on the case. So that sounds great. Eight. Murder in the Telephone Exchange by June Wright. This was originally published in 1948. It is set in Australia. And the main character is Maggie Burns, who she works at the Telephone Exchange. Um, a colleague is murdered and she turns to um, sleuthing. And I did flip through this one as well and it is also set um, during the summer. It's, it talks about it being really hot and stuff and so again sounds like a good p potential for a summer read. Nine is Bones Under the Beach Hut by Simon Brett. This is a mystery that takes place at an affluent seaside resort that is unaccustomed to gr crime so when human remains are found beneath the floorboards of one of its beach huts, the community is awash with suspicion and fear. Number 10 is Court of Lions by Jane Johnson. This is a dual timeline um, story set in Granada. And uh, the beginning here calls it beautiful sunlit city of Granada. So that sounds summery to me. Uh, I don't know if it actually takes place in the summer, but I'm going for it anyways. So we have Kate Fordham who is escaping a trauma um, and she goes to the city of Granada and uh, working an unfulfilling job in a busy bar. And one day in the glorious gardens of the Alhambra, once home to the Sultan, she finds a scrap of paper hidden in one of the ancient walls and there is strange symbols inscribed a message from another age. It has lain undiscovered since before the fall of Granada in 1492 when the city was surrendered to Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand. Born of love in a time of danger and desperation, the fragment will be the catalyst that changes Kate's life forever. And as far as I understand, uh, we get stories from both timelines, from 1492 and from uh, the current day with Kate. So yeah, that sounds like a good summary read as well. Okay, number 11 is The Vanishing Man by Charles Finch. This is part of his Charles Lennox series. This is a historical mystery series set during the Victorian era, uh, London. 1853 and I believe this is his prequel so he's got a number of books in the series and then he went back to the beginning and I believe he wrote like a trilogy of prequels which is really fun so this is one of those where Charles Yannick Lennox is again a young man he is called upon by the Duke of Dorset one of England's most revered noblemen for help. A painting of the Duke's great grandfather has been stolen from his private study, but the Duke's concern is not for his ancestor's portrait. Hiding in plain sight nearby is another painting of infinitely more value, one that holds the key to one of the country's most famous and best kept secrets. Now, I, I did a little looking as well 
just to see if I could figure it out. And it talks about, yes, it's in June. It takes place in June. So that's a summer read. Coming in at number 12 on my list is Topper Takes a Trip by Thorn Smith. This one, uh, Topper and his wife head to the Riviera. Um, so again, I'm going to call that a summary read. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be, um, it looks like it's very funny. He has ghosts following him, which uh, is very entertaining and gonna cause all kinds of shenanigans, I'm sure. This was a book that was originally published in 1932, and my edition is from 1945. Coming in at number 13 is The Case of the Sunbather's Diary by Earl Stanley Gardner. This is one of his Perry Mason mysteries. Perry Mason desperately needed information about his client and her father who was in prison, convicted of stealing $396,751.36 from a bank. The money had never been recovered. The one man who might have the facts Mason needed was Jordan L. Ballard. So Mason went to Ballard's house, hoping to confirm some suspicions. Hardly had Mason returned to his office when Paul Drake called to report that Ballard had been murdered. And, said Drake, a witness had seen a tall, broad-shouldered man leaving the house. According to the witness, the man looked just like Barry Mason. Oh no! <laughs> Let's see, this is a Perry Mason from 1955. Coming in at number 14, we have Gently in the Sun by Alan Hunter. This is also from the 50s. Um, there's a, I've got a lot here that are like kind of vintage or golden age uh, ones from 59. The heat is on when a beautiful young woman is found dead on a beach at the height of summer. Sounds good. Uh, 15, The Lady Vanishes by Ethel Lena White. This was a book first published in, uh, hang on. 1936 and, and the original title is The Wheel Spins and this is the story of Iris Henderson who is uh, traveling home to England. She's been in Europe and she's on a cross Europe train journey. Her traveling companion vanishes from their compartment and every other passenger on board insists that the woman doesn't exist that she was never there at all. Coming in at number 16, we have Murder on Safari by Elspeth Huxley. This was published in 1938. So we have a luxury hunting camp financed by Lord Baradale, a peppery and amateur photographer of big game and his wealthy wife replete with gigolo chauffeur from Hollywood. Hmm. Vachelle, the young Canadian superintendent of the Chania CID is called in when Lady Baradale's jewels are stolen and when Lady Baradale's body is saved from the vultures with a bullet hole in her skull. He finds every white member of the party suspect. Very interesting. So they're in Africa um, and so it's hot again. So I was just going with uh, hot temperatures feels like a summary read. 17 is the a six letter word for death by Patricia Moyes. This is one of her uh, Superintendent Henry Tibbet series, originally published in 1983. He, Henry Tibbet, receives an anonymous crossword puzzle in the mail, and he assumes that it's just a prank. But bored with a slow summer, he begins to fill in the empty squares. He realizes he may have something deadly on his hands. Intriguing. 18, Summer's Lease by John Mortimer. It's high summer and high comedy too when Molly drags her amiably bickering family to a rented Tuscan villa for the holidays. 19, A Florentine Death by Michelle Guitari. This is um, obviously set in Florence. Michelle Ferrara, a lover of a good bottle of local Rosie de Montalcino, 
smoker of Antico Toscano cigars and head of Florence's elite police force, the Squadra Mobile. With a rising murder rate and high levels of mafia activity, Ferrara has an unenviable job. And when a spate of brutal murders hits Florence, Ferrara's role becomes even more dangerous. And then the last one on the list, number 20, is Canaletto and the Case of Westminster Bridge by Janet Lawrence. This is part of her famous painter, uh, famous painter Canaletto plays detective in 18th century London. Sounds good. I remember my parents gave me this, gave me this book and I have not read it yet. Um, London, 1746 and the painter Canaletto arrives to paint the new Westminster Bridge, eager to discover the fame and fortune he once enjoyed in Venice. No sooner does he land, however, than danger dogs his footsteps. Rescued from certain death by Fanny Rooker, an apprentice engraver with plans for an artistic career, Canaletto discovers he is a target for robbery and worse. Yeah. Oops. So that's a historical mystery that sounds great. So those are my the 20 books on my booktube spin list for round number three. Um, stay tuned uh, and I will post a comment, I will pin a comment with which books of these, uh, which book wins, which book I will be reading uh, sometime in this summer, June, July, or possibly September. All right, uh, have you read any of these books? Um, are you participating in the booktube spin? Let's chat about it in the comment section down below and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.